February of 1966, as I lay upon my bed, deeply troubled by the predicament of my people. It seemed as if we had been bound in a predicament with no escape. And I was in deep meditation, obviously very painful meditation. And I was asking your Yisrael, is there any way out? Not so much to help me, but to help my people, to find the solutions to the multiplicity of problems that they are confronted with. And if there is any minute thing that I can do, please allow me to play that role. It was at that time that the angel Gabriel came. Quite unexpected, myself, and uh, I would think that I was no different from the prophets and messengers that had preceded me. Ezekiel or Moses, I was not prepared for what I was about to hear. And the angel came to bring the word of God, and thus it was spoken. It is time to start the journey back to the promised land and to establish the long-awaited kingdom of God that had been prophesied by Daniel the prophet in the second chapter and the 44th verse. And the year of the Exodus will be 1967. Needless to say, as I arose from deep meditation, confounded, and pondering upon the words that had been spoken. Truthfully, I say this quite often in jest at this time, but I genuinely felt that there was more discussion and more planning that was needed. And if there was any way that I could have summoned the angel back again, to receive more details, believe me, I would have. But it was not to be. Obviously, that was one of the most trying moments of my life. I had to decide whether to speak the words that were spoken unto me, to share them with the members of a beta or to hold them within me. I didn't want to be wrong. I did not want to be ostracized. And I definitely did not want to mislead my people. Approximately three weeks passed. Much tears, much crying. Finally, I realized that the only way that I would know is that I would have to find the faith and to walk out on the water. Only then would I know if I was to drown or to survive. Thereafter, I spoke the words that were spoken unto me by the angel Gabriel before all of the congregation. As I look back historically now, I understand the events that unfolded thereafter. For historically, it was the summer of 1966. After those words were spoken, 
that the great riots began the length and breadth of America. The cities were burning. The blood of my people was being shed. I know that they did not understand and I know that I at that time could not give them the comprehension because everything was being inspired by the words that were not completely clear to me. But now I understand that those events that unfolded were a direct result. They were set in motion by the words of the angel Gabriel being spoken. The great riots. It was in January of 1967 that the great snow fell in Chicago, approximately 24 inches of snow. And as I walked out of my home on that morning, it appeared as if the entire world stood still. For all of the great awesome power of the Gentiles had been brought to naught by an accumulation of little snowflakes. I know that at that time it was a time of great fear in the midst of all of those that bore witness to that experience. And I understand also that that great fear had to exist in close proximity to the Father and the words that had been spoken. So Chicago was the chosen venue for these events to be set in motion. As we are aware, the summer of 1967, the great riots continued. And our people at that time were imaging themselves after African royalty. They were wearing the Afro, the naturals. They had put on the African cultural garments. It was a time that sanctified itself so that as we look back historically, we would know, we would see the significance and the connection. The riots continued, and in 1967, as the word of the angel had come, the great exodus from the lands of the captivity was set in motion. I know that as I share these things in this generation with many individuals, it is quite hard to comprehend, and I understand that. Well, the word spoken to Habakkuk the prophet, that even though I am here and sharing exactly what occurred, it is hard for them to believe this. Because our people are not, were not, in a mindset to accept the presence of God, the God of our fathers, in their lives. So 1967, we began the journey. When I shared the words of the angel Gabriel with the saints, I had no idea as to where the Exodus would lead us. I could not go to any scriptural reference. I could not prove that there was a place set aside. I could not even respond to such questions. But by my faith in the words that were spoken and by the love of my people and wanting to alleviate their suffering, I took the steps out on the water and the presence of Yah Yisrael would not allow me to sink. Thereafter, 
in meditation and prayer, the Holy Spirit began to guide my hands, to guide my mind, to go into the words of the prophets and to find all of the scriptural references that would give us our direction, where we were to go, how long we were to sojourn there, when we were to depart, when we were to arrive in the promised land, and to declare the coming of the kingdom of Yah on this earth. When the words were spoken, none of those things had been revealed. Thereafter, the Holy Spirit guided me to the words of the prophet that were spoken that we would have to sojourn in a place that had been prepared for us by God. Needless to say, it is for that reason that we were guided to Liberia, a colony established by former slaves. For all of those whom desire to return, to come and to be accepted. In 1822, Liberia was established by former slaves. And in 1847, the Constitution of Liberia was set that it would be the homeland for the slaves that were returning to seek their freedom upon the continent of Africa. That was the place that had been prepared for us. In addition, says in that we would sojourn there for a time, times and a half time, approximately three and one half years. We would have to get into Liberia. We would have to prepare ourselves get out of Liberia and into the promised land to declare the coming of the kingdom. And this would have to be achieved in a manner that was no less than an absolute miracle. For we could not be delivered by our materialistic wealth. The Exodus caused us to once again stand naked before the Creator. We had nothing. I and all of those that had heard and moved according to the words that were spoken, we had to give up everything and everyone and to stand naked as in the Genesis before your Yisrael. 1967, the exodus began and the struggle of our people was changed from one that was carnal to one that was spiritual. The seed, the sacred seed, was now set in motion by the Holy Spirit journeying back to the promised land to begin the most significant chapter and the final chapter in the history of the captives who are, in fact, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 1968, we had entered into the wilderness the prophet Ezekiel had shared with us that we would enter into the wilderness of the people. And from that, we discerned that we would have to go into the interior of Liberia to prepare ourselves and to be prepared 
for the journey into the promised land. We like unto our fathers when they came up out of ancient Egypt, would have to be tried, we would have to be proven that y'all would see what was in our heart. If we were simply moving according to the sensation of the moment, or if we in our souls had made the decision to move in harmony with his will on this earth. And I must say to all of those strong individuals that gave the inspiration, the motivation, that stood fast, there was approximately 400 individuals that left during the great exodus. Only 109, approximately one-fourth of those that departed held fast to enter into the promised land. The other three-fourths returned to the lands of the captivity. And I hold no animosity and I bear no grudges and no anger against them. For I bear witness, it was a very, very trying time. And except that you had accepted with all of your heart, soul, and might to come once again under the banner of Yah and to advance his interests on this earth, there was nothing that could keep you in the wilderness of Liberia, in the midst of driver ants, in the midst of death by starvation, in the midst of great humility. All of us, sparing not one, we were humbled before our Maker. But undoubtedly, this is the path that y'all had chosen. For as we were being humbled, we were being re-imaged again, casting off the nigritudes of the captivity and putting on the garments of holiness. We were in fact being humbled in order to be prepared for the sacred mission that was before us. The challenges were formidable. From the driver ants, poisonous snakes, sears and roebucks tents, by the way, that they told us were rainproof. 156 inches of monsoon rain every year. If there was ever a time for individuals to bring forth their justifiable reasons to return, that was the season. But all of us that remained, our flesh dissipated and fell to the ground. But out of the soil also came forth a new spirit, a new image. We were being prepared to enter into the promised land. Sometimes I make mention that when we arrived in Liberia, I had no idea how we were going to get to the promised land. As a matter of fact, the saints had been instructed to prepare themselves to walk. I 
look back now and I understand why your Israel had to lay before us this great challenge and he had to search our hearts to know what was therein but we would not be denied the 109 souls that did survive the journey through the wilderness began the trek into the promised land in August of 1969. We continued the journey to the promised land in December of 1969 and I myself, a part of the last group, arrived in Israel March the 3rd, 1970. And on the Day of Atonement, 1970, three and one half years from the exodus to the fulfilling of the vision, we declared the kingdom of Yah had come on this earth. The kingdom that had been prophesied to come by Daniel the prophet in the second chapter and the 44th verse. Understandably, when individuals hear us say that the kingdom of Yah has come, they being of the frame of mind that we once were, they envision something that isn't going to be. And these things have been embedded in their minds so that when they would stand before the words of the prophets actually being fulfilled in their presence, they would not recognize them. It reminds me of Yeshua as he stood in the presence of Philip. And whatever Philip's teachings had been concerning the coming of a deliverer, it did not coincide, it did not agree with the image being represented by Yeshua. Subsequently, he responded to Philip, have I been here with you all of this time and you cannot recognize me. So the coming of the kingdom on this earth, it is unfolding at this very moment. But the image that has been embedded in the minds of our people will allow them to be right in the midst of the events that are occurring and not be able to observe them. For the image that has been transplanted in their minds is one that isn't going to be. So I too could make the statement, but has the kingdom come and uh, expanded itself in perfect harmony with the words of the prophets and you cannot see it? It is because our people see the world through the eyes of a European image and the European image has been transplanted into them in order to prevent them from observing and understanding the kingdom which represents their deliverance. So, the kingdom of Yah, out of this experience, the Genesis ideal has instructed us that we then would have to begin making man and woman in our image and our likeness. 
and the kingdom of God having come, the witness, the testimony would be that there is now a new man that has been imaged by this kingdom at Jerusalem. And for this new man, a new woman has been brought forth, representing the great beauty that comes as a result of holiness. And this new man and this new woman would come together under the bonds of a covenant. And they would bring forth children, new children, as it was in the first Genesis. We now find a new man, a new woman, and new children. Subsequently, a new your family begins to walk this earth again. And this your family will then move, being guided by the Holy Spirit, to set a standard at Jerusalem, to set a standard, to bring forth the institutions that would be compatible with their objectives, with their spirit. And they would bring forth institutions of higher learning, institutions of what we now call dedication, as they would cast down the old image of education, institutions of holiness, for we are not referring to the holiness that is being referred to by religion. We are referring to an observable holiness that has to come forth as a result of being moved and guided by the Holy Spirit. We've had to establish institutions to bring forth what we call the high, holy, and sacred dietary standards. The things that we eat must be in harmony with the mind that we have to nourish. Subsequently, we had to go back to a diet, nutrition that would come unto us solely from the soil from which we were created. We, the new man, would not consume the flesh of animals or the blood therein. These new institutions for clothing, clothing for the glory and beauty as defined by God. Everything that we would bring forth from the new mind would have to reflect the image and the relationship that we had established with the Most High. So today, to the ends of the earth, the word is going forth. The institutions of righteousness for this stage of our development have been established. And what would be the logical next step according to the instructions of Yah. The prophets have said that once the institutions are established, once you have set the standard, once these standards are rooted in your soul, then all of the nations of the earth and in thy seed, all of the nations of the earth would be blessed. 
And this sacred seed, these sacred standards, these sacred institutions that are under the banner of the kingdom of Yah, they are the highway that will lead all men that desire to back to the house of the Most Holy. And the house of Yah today is called the kingdom of God. All of these things are transpiring at this very moment. The words of the prophet Isaiah, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of Yah would be established in the top of the mountain men would begin to journey up to Jerusalem and it would be a time of great teaching and they shall be taught the ways of Yah Yaakov all of these things verily they have come to pass the word spoken by the angel Gabriel it has been said according to the words that were spoken that the entire message was approximately 45 seconds 45 seconds but submerged in that message was the power submerged in that message were the keys to establish this kingdom. Submerged in that message was the power to bring us through the wilderness of Liberia and to bring us into the promised land. 45 seconds as we retrospect 40 years later. I need not have to bear witness of myself for myself. Behold, all of the things that have been accomplished are a result of the 45 second vision. I need not have to bear witness of myself for myself. That your high, for if you can behold my countenance and see the things that I have referred to, then you must bear witness. Your high, in this generation, the blessed generation, and in this sacred idea, this sacred seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed.